Hi everyone, welcome to the week 8 video for Acts I 232. This week we started looking at life annuities, which is a different kind of contract to the life insurance contracts we were looking at before. In those cases, payments are made upon death or sometimes upon survival to a certain period. With life annuities, payments are made as long as the person is alive, so throughout their entire lifetime until um, the person, the annuitant, is no longer alive to receive those payments. So there are, just like with life insurances, there are different payment schemes. We could pay at the end of every year or the beginning of every year. We could pay periodically throughout the year, m times a year, or we could even pay continuously throughout the year. And in all cases, we assume an annual payment of one dollar. If we wanted to scale that up, we would just multiply by the annual payment. So it's always one dollar a year, whether that's at one particular time or multiple times throughout the year or continuously throughout the entire year. So the first case was the annual case where payments are made once a year and if the we're talking about an annuity due that means the payments are made at the beginning of each year as long as the person is alive. So payments are made at time zero through time kx. In the case of an annuity immediate that's where the payments are made at the end of each year. So the first payment would be made at time one but the last payment would also be made at time kx not time kx plus one because the annuitant must be alive to receive the payment. So in fact, the only difference between those two cases, due and immediate, is whether or not there's a payment of one dollar at time zero. Each of these two kinds of annuities, we represent the present value by these two symbols here, dots for the due case and no dots for the immediate case. And both of them, of course, are going to depend on the value of the random variable kx. So that's what we care about here. In the continuous case, where we assume, again, $1 per year, but paid continuously throughout the year, we shift from caring about kx to actually the random variable tx, the entire lifetime of the person. Because even if they live part way through a year, with this continuous payment, they are going to receive some of that payment for that year. So you're going to get slightly more money if it's a continuously paying annuity, because you will get credit for all of the fractional part of the year that the annuitant lived. So in this case, again, we care about tx, and it's going to be a continuously paying annuity that pays from time zero all the way up to time tx, with a rate of $1 per year. The last case was the Ensley case, where payments were made discreetly throughout the year, so still discrete times, but they were paid m times a year, and each payment is 1 over m dollars. And in that case, we care about not kx and not tx, but actually k upper m. Uh, of x. We care about, to the nearest 1 over mth of a year, how far the person lived. So the last payment that's made in this case is going to be a 1 over m dollar payment made at time k upper m of x. No payment is made at this time plus 1 over m, that would be the end of the 1 over mth of death, because the annuitant is not alive to receive that payment. And in this case, again, we have the difference between the due case and the immediate case. And the difference will only be whether or not a payment of 1 over m dollars is made at time 0. So the difference between this case and this case is that this case is just 1 over m dollars larger, because there's a guaranteed payment of 1 over m at time 0. And for all of these five cases, we can evaluate the present value in three different ways, in fact. One of the ways would be to look at it as a corresponding function of the associated life insurance contract. So here would be capital AX, here would be capital A bar X, and here would be capital A upper M uh, sub X. Each of those will have a relationship, and if we know those capital A values, we can obtain the small a values very easily. The second way is the messy way to look at it at, as first principles of the expected value of the random variable. And the third way, which is probably the nicest, is to use the same principle we used in the life insurance case. We always want to sum up, or integrate in the continuous case, the amount paid times a discount factor times the probability that the payment is made. It's just now the probability that the payment is made is simply the probability that the annuitant is alive at that time. All they need to do is be alive at that time and they will receive that payment. So we get sums or integrals depending on the case of those three quantities, amount, discount factor, and probability of being alive at that time. That's usually the easiest way to evaluate these annuities. The last thing we looked at was a recursion uh, backwards recursion, in fact, same as for the life insurance case, but for the life annuity due. And we get a really nice simple relationship here that we can use if we have a discrete uh, life table to calculate these annuity factors. And 
uh, the life table that's in the textbook has both these uh, A do X factors as well as the capital A factors for each of those ages based on those life table values. So that was everything for this week. Next week we're going to start talking about annuities but that are only payable until N years. So there's going to be a relationship between that and a term annuity, sorry, a term insurance contract, and we'll see that next week.